Bonjour mes chers étudiants de SS3 et soyez les bienvenus à l'apprentissage en ligne. Je suis toujours Madame Evelyne Ogu, un de votre professeur de français. Et je suis ici pour vous enseigner la grammaire au, au sujet de uh, discours rapporté, catégorisé ou discours direct et discours indirect. Comme vous savez, cette leçon a quelques objectifs spécifiques. Et ces objectifs spécifiques sont que, à la fin de cette leçon, vous, les étudiants, serez capables de reconnaître le discours direct et le discours indirect. Deux, vous serez capable de modifier les verbes, le pronom, les adjectifs démonstratifs possessifs dans le discours indirect. Trois, vous serez capable de rapporter ces discours soit directement, soit indirectement. Comme j'ai déjà dit, cette leçon, le public cible de cette leçon sont les étudiants de SS3. Mais les étudiants de SS2 peuvent aussi en bénéficier. Alors, c'est pertinent que tout le monde reste attentif à cette leçon. Now, this lesson is going to be taught both in English and in French. So I want to begin with the French uh, uh, teaching, French version of what we want to talk about. Like I have said, the topic is Le Discours Rapporté, which is categorized uh, in two segments. You have the, the Discours Direct, which, is in, which in English is a direct speech, and the Discours Indirect, which is a indirect speech. Now, what is Discours Direct or indirect speech? A direct speech. What is discourse direct or direct speech? A direct speech is a speech reported using the exact words of the speaker. That is quoting the speaker. This speech is always put in inverted commas or quotation marks. So when you quote somebody, you are making a direct speech. And in French, this type of speech is called discourse direct. The direct speech is introduced by speech verbs, which can either be in the present or in the past tense. For example, Ada says, I go to school every day. If you look at that first example, you see the verb says, which is in the present tense. Then the second example, Ada said, I am going home. The introductory verb there is in the past tense. So just like we have mentioned, the introductory verb can either be in the present tense or in the past tense. Now, discourse indirect, which is your indirect speech. What is discourse indirect? An indirect speech is a speech not reported with the exact words of the speaker, but rather paraphrased with the introduction of the conjunction that, which means que in French, and also with the modification of the verbal tenses, the pronouns, adverbs of time, possessive and demonstrative adjectives to mention that a few. The tenses of the introductory verbs determine the status of the verbal tense in the indirect speech, whether they will be modified or they will remain invariable. Worthy of note is that when the introductory verb is in the present tense, the tenses of verbs in the indirect speech do not change. But when it is in the past, there are modifications of the verbal tenses in the indirect speech. So now we'll take some examples of the indirect uh, speech. Number one there, you have, Ada says, I go to school every day. 
what becomes of that sentence? It now becomes, Ada says that she goes to school every day. The introductory verb is in the present tense, and that makes the verb in the in inverted commas not to change. The tense of that verb did not change because the introductory verb is in the present tense. The second example, Ada said, I am going home. In that sentence, you have the introductory verb in the past tense. So converting or transforming that verb into the indirect speech now becomes, Ada said that she was going home. Something has changed there. The tense of the verb in the indirect speech has changed from the present tense to the in, okay for the English to the past tense. When we come to French, we'll now look at the 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 marriage of the tenses. So we've been talking English all along. Now we want to look at examples in French so that we'll be able to spot out the invariabilities and the modifications in the indirect speech. Number one, Ada di Jupa. That is direct speech. In the indirect speech, it becomes what? Ada di Kelpa. Number two, Ada adi Jupa. In the indirect speech, it becomes Ada adi Kelpate. What is happening there? The introductory verb in that sentence is in the past tense, what we call the passé composé. Because that introductory verb is in the past tense, then the indirect speech, the tenses in the indirect speech have to be modified. So we have the passé composé being modified into the imperfect tense, what we call l'empathé. Number three, elle crie. Tu as tout vendu hier. The introductory verb is in the present. What becomes of that sentence in the indirect uh, speech? It remains the same. The tenses do not change. Elle crie que j'ai tout vendu la veille. Something is happening there. In that number three, we have the adverb of time in the direct speech. The adverb of time, year, which means yesterday. But in the indirect speech, the yesterday has disappeared to give way for another word, another adverb of time, which is la veille, which means the next day. Number four, elle a crié. Tu a tu vendu yeah. Introductory verb in the past tense, so there's bound to be modification in the indirect speech. Elle a crié que j'avais tout vendu la veille. So if you look at numbers one to four, they are just trying to tell us when it, the introductory verb is in the present, what happens in the indirect speech, and when it is in the past, what happens in the indirect speech. But from number five, five and six, we are now going to see the verbs, the introductory verbs in the past tense. Number five, elle m'a informé, je partirai demain. Now becomes in the indirect speech, elle m'a informé qu'il partirait le lendemain. There are modifications in the indirect speech. Why? Because the introductory verb is in the past tense. The modifications we have there, we have in the verb tense, the future simple changing to uh, le conditionnel simple, partire there and partire here. Then we also have modification in the adverb of time, doma, changing to le lendemain. Number six. Annette a déclaré, vous aurez fini vos devoirs aujourd'hui. Becomes, Annette a déclaré que 
nous aurions fini le devoir ce jour-là. Modifications again. We can see the verb uh, future anterior, that is the presence of the future uh, sampler and uh, your past participle, passé, participe passé. Now becoming le conditionnel passé, where you have the uh, conditionnel sample et participe passé. We also have another modification there in the adverb of time. The word aujourd'hui becoming ce jour-là. Now, with the questions and commands, look at the invariabilities and modifications in the indirect speech. Discours direct. Number one, elle demande. Qu'est-ce que tu manges? In the indirect speech, it becomes, elle demande ce que je mange. What is happening there? We have seen that the question word, qu'est-ce que, has been transformed in the indirect speech into what, ce que. Number two, elle a demandé, qu'est-ce que tu manges? The same transformation we have there, qu'est-ce que, becoming ce que, but we have modification in the uh, verbal tenses. We have in the first one, the direct speech, we have the verb in the present tense, but the verb in the indirect speech has become le imparfait, that is the imperfect tense. Number three, elle a demandé, est-ce que vous êtes malade? becomes, elle a demandé si nous étions malade. We have SQ as a question word there, transforming into C. Then we have some modifications in the pronouns, vous becoming nous. Then number four, elle a demandé pourquoi tu parles comme un enfant? In the indirect speech, it becomes, elle a demandé pourquoi je parlais comme un enfant. What is happening there? We have the question word remaining invariable. We have pourquoi in the direct speech. We also have pourquoi in the indirect speech. Nothing changed. But modifications are seen in the verbal tenses. The present tense becoming the imperfect. Number five, elle m'a demandé, où vas-tu? Becomes, elle m'a demandé, où j'allais? The same invariability we are seeing there of the question word, où, remaining the same in the indirect speech. The modification in the verb tenses. Present tense, and the uh, imperfect tense. Number six, elle m'a ordonné. Fais vite. Becomes, elle m'a ordonné de faire vite. What is happening there? We see that sentence is a command. So when you have a command, you now have in the indirect uh, form, the presence of the preposition do, and modifying the imperative verb in the direct speech into an infinitive verb in the indirect speech. Okay, so far so good. We've looked at both the, the direct speech and, in, and the indirect speech. So if we were in a physical class now, it would have been your turn to make the observations that you see from the the two types of uh, speeches. So we are going into the area of uh, le repérage, which means observation. What did we observe from what we have taught so far? One, modification des temps verbaux ainsi. That's what we've been talking about all along, the modification in the verbal tenses. 
and how do they marry? How do they come together? Which verb tense goes with, with which? So we have the, in, the direct speech when we have the present tense. It then means it has to go with uh, the imperfect tense in the indirect speech. Then we have le passé composé, which is your past tense. This goes with uh, le plus que parfait in the indirect uh, uh, speech. The plus que parfait, I hope you remember, you still remember your tenses. The plus que parfait is a combination of the past participle. That's you have the imperfect first before the past the participle. So plus que parfait is your uh, the imperfect tense and the past participle. Then when you have le futur simple in the direct speech, in the indirect it changes to what? Le conditionnel présent. We know our conditional uh, tense, the conditional present. Then in the same direct, if you have le futur intérieur, le futur intérieur is a combination of your your future and the past participle. If you have that in the direct speech, in the indirect, it becomes what le conditionnel passé, le conditionnel passé. That is still your conditional and your past the participle. Then the second modification, or rather the observation we see again there, modification des adverbes de temps. We have modification in the adverbs of time. We have, when we have domain in the direct speech, in the indirect speech it becomes le lendemain. Domain means tomorrow, le lendemain, the day after tomorrow, the next day. Then when we have yesterday, which is year in the direct speech. In the indirect, it becomes the next day, which means la veille, la veille. Then when we have aujourd'hui, which means today, in the indirect speech, it becomes ce jour-là, that day. Then we have jour dernier, jour dernier. When we have that in the direct uh, speech, in the indirect, it becomes Ju précédent. The important word there is dernier, which changes depending on the gender and the number of the noun. If we look at ju dernier, the ju is a masculine noun. That's why we have the form of dernier that we have there. But if you have a noun that is feminine, the dernier will change. That is addition of the letter E. So the same goes for jus précédent. It also reacts to uh, number and uh, gender. Then the next one is uh, jus prochain. Just like we have in denier, the important word again there is prochain, which changes depending on the number and the gender of the noun in question. So we, when we have prochain in the direct speech, in the indirect, the prochain disappears and is replaced with uh, suivant. Suivant also reacts to the gender and the number of the noun around it. Then a third observation is other modifications that we noticed. In the direct speech, when you have SQ, in the indirect it becomes C. Then when you have KSQ, it becomes SQ. Then when you have an imperative verb, a verb in the imperative form, in the indirect speech, that verb now changes to infinitive, but it has to be preceded by the preposition do. Then number four, we have uh, invariabilities also that we noticed in the course of the, the lesson. For this school direct, we have uh, u, which remains the same even in the indirect uh, speech. We have pourquoi, remaining pourquoi, common, remaining common, combien, combien. In short, mostly the question words, they do not change. This one word, question words, they remain the same in the indirect uh, speech. 
We wouldn't end this lesson without uh, trying to evaluate ourselves by giving ourselves, ourselves some assignments to do on the topic uh, already learned. So you have your devoir, which is assignment, and the instruction says, Mettez ces phrases au discours direct. Number one, il m'a dit. Let us note that all the sentences are in the direct speech. From numbers one to ten, they are all direct uh, uh, speeches. So your duty here is to change them to indirect speech. Number one, il m'a dit, je vais bien. Number two, il a dit, vous n'êtes pas malade. Number three, il demande, tu voyagerais demain? Number four, il m'a ordonné, reste tranquille. Number five, il a demandé, où allez-vous? Number six, il nous a informé, j'ai écouté la radio hier. Number seven, il m'a demandé, pourquoi tu ne parles pas? Number eight, il a annoncé, j'ai fini mes devoirs la semaine dernière. Number nine, le professeur lui a dit, sortez de la classe. And number ten, Amena a dit, j'aurai fini la tâche aujourd'hui. Appelé. Okay, so with the assignments, we come to the end of this uh, lesson. But uh, it's also worthy of note that we try to remind ourselves what we've been talking about all along. We've been on the topic, le discours rapporté, which is categorized uh, in two segments, discours direct et discours indirect. Just like I said at the beginning, this lesson the target uh, group or class for this lesson is the SS3 class. But the SS2 students can also benefit from this lesson because it's a topic that cuts across the senior classes and is always a, a regular topic that comes up in uh, your school certificate examination and your NECO examination. So when you do this assignment, you forward it to the email we are seeing on the board there, LGC portal codes, dgclass at gmail.com. And your assignment should bear your name, your class, the subject, and the topic treated. I hope you remain safe. God bless you.